Live from London, this is BBC News. Western countries evacuate diplomats from Sudan as the fighting continues. Some citizens remain stranded. Two weeks before the coronation, a new BBC poll suggests less than a third of young adults in the UK want the monarchy to continue. Spain exhumes the remains of a far-right leader as part of a plan to combat nostalgia for the Franco regime. And thousands of migrants march through southern Mexico to demand their request for asylum in the US be sped up. Hello, I'm Lucy Hawkins. Evacuations from the Sudanese capital are continuing as fighting between the army and a paramilitary group shows no signs of ending. The violence has been happening for more than a week, worsening the country's already desperate humanitarian crisis. These are pictures of a Spanish diplomatic personnel and citizens being evacuated overnight. A number of other countries have also moved their diplomatic staff to safety, but foreign civilians have been reporting difficulties in trying to get out of the country. Some have been travelling by road and convoys heading to Port Sudan on the Red Sea, as well as north to the border with Egypt. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. For Dame Sharon White as chair of the John Lewis Partnership, she's normally focused on profit. But at this blood donation centre in Stratford, the focus was on giving blood and the pressing need for more black donors. I'm so happy. It's been a long time since I like, last gave blood, about 20 years ago. And it, I just feel really happy and very lucky. Sickle cell anemia is the fastest growing genetic condition in the UK and far more prevalent in black people. Over the last five years, the numbers of blood donations needed to treat it has increased by 66%. I'm here giving blood. This is your first time, is it? It is. Yeah, it's Lord happened? Simon Woolley, the principal of Homerton College in Cambridge and founder of Operation Black Boat, was also donating. And the two hope that their example will lead to others doing the same. And black donors are particularly important because the ethnically matched blood provides the best treatment and the blood of these two well-known donors will be ready to use within hours. You're live with BBC News. With less than two weeks to go until the coronation of King Charles, a new poll has suggested public opinion about the British royals is changing, with less than a third of 18 to 24-year-olds in the UK wanting the monarchy to continue. Commissioned by the BBC's Panorama programme, the YouGov poll also revealed that almost half of those asked, who were from ethnic minority backgrounds, believe the royal family has a problem with race and diversity. Jane Corbyn reports. Mimi Swabi there. Well, as film costumes go, John Travolta's Saturday Night Fever suit is iconic. It has now sold for $260,000. The white polyester three-piece, which featured in the 1977 film as he took to the dance floor, was originally bought for $100 from a small menswear shop in New York. It's one of two identical suits that John Travolta wore on set. It's even said to still have the sweat marks on it. See you again in a few minutes. Bye-bye. This is BBC News, the headlines. Western countries evacuate diplomats from Sudan as the fighting continues. Some citizens, though, remain stranded. Two weeks before the coronation, a new BBC poll suggests less than a third of young adults in the UK want the monarchy to continue. And the former Strictly Come Dancing head judge, Len Goodman, has died at the age of 78. Well, there appears to be no end in sight for fighting between the army and a paramilitary group in Sudan. The violence has been taking place for more than a week now, worsening the country's already desperate humanitarian crisis. Though an Eid truce failed to hold, there has been a lull in clashes during which a number of countries have been evacuating their nationals. France has just announced it's closing its embassy in Sudan until further notice. The EU foreign policy chief says there can be no military solution to the fighting. The international community must push the rival generals towards a political resolution to bring an end to it all. Claudia, thank you for your lovely tribute to Len Goodman. Nice to talk to you. Bye. 
And as I said, the live page is up and running, just bringing our reaction. So many people with some really lovely tributes to Lynn Goodman, who has died at the age of 78. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Now showing on BBC Real. This is a miracle. One of the most important discoveries ever made on the history of the Aleph Bet. Our expedition came to Tel Achish to excavate the first Iron Age city, the first city built by the King of Judah. And indeed we found a city wall and houses from this period. The Canaanite language developed in the second or maybe third millennium BC. The Canaanites invented the alphabet. They produced about 30 signs, 30 letters. It is revolutionary. One of the most important inventions in the history of human culture. Original Global Stories from the BBC. You're live with BBC News. Now, could we turn handwritten records of extreme weather of the past into modern models that help us track climate change? A group of researchers have just done that, comparing storms going back more than 100 years. Their study focuses on Storm Ulysses, a ferocious event in the UK in 1903. On reanalyzing records of it, they've been able to paint a much clearer picture of its hurricane force winds. Live now to Professor Ed Hawkins from the University of Reading. Uh, Professor, good to see you. Tell us a bit more about what we now know then about Ulysses. Ben, Alexandra, thank you both very much for joining us. A wide range of views being reflected around the coronation can be found on the website as well. And we will have full coverage, of course, of the coronation here on the Live from London, this is BBC News. Western countries evacuate diplomats from Sudan as the fighting continues, but some citizens remain stranded. Thousands of migrants march through southern Mexico to demand their request for asylum in the United States be sped up. Spain exhumes the remains of a far-right leader as part of a plan to combat nostalgia for the Franco regime. Hello, I'm Lucy Hawkins. Evacuations from the Sudanese capital Khartoum are continuing as fighting between the army and a paramilitary group shows no signs of ending. The violence has been happening for more than a week, worsening the country's already desperate humanitarian crisis. Uh, we have some pictures of a Spanish diplomatic personnel and citizens being evacuated overnight. A number of other countries have also moved their diplomatic staff to safety, but foreign civilians have been reporting difficulties trying to leave the country. Some have been traveling by road and convoys heading to Port Sudan on the Red Sea, as well as north to the border with Egypt. Let's uh, get the latest from our correspondent in Lagos, Mayne Jones. Guy Hedgeko there in Madrid. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Well, it's just gone 3 a.m. and uh, I've managed to get an hour and a half in which isn't bad for me, but I'm looking as rough as a bag of spanners. Dan Hill has struggled to get to sleep for nearly a decade. But the problem isn't just about how long it takes him to drift off when he hits the pillow. You know, getting to sleep isn't the issue, but I can be awake again within an hour. 
and that could be for any reason it could be a knock at the door it could be a dog barking it could be someone walking past and that's me again for the day then it's not a case of going back to sleep because that's just not possible in a 24 hour period what how much sleep roughly are you getting probably two hours two hours sometimes i'm lucky to get three and i think sleep deprivation is a massive issue i think it i think it has health implications i think it has working life implications relationships especially you know and it, it needs addressing You're live with BBC News. With less than two weeks to go until the coronation of King Charles, a new poll suggests public opinion about the British royals is changing, with less than a third of 18 to 24-year-olds in the UK wanting the monarchy to continue. Commissioned by the BBC's Panorama programme, the YouGov poll also revealed that almost half of those asked, who were from ethnic minority backgrounds, believe the royal family has a problem with race and diversity. Jane Corbyn reports. But for this town and they really want to do all they can to bring them up and get them as high up in the, the league as possible and they're very committed so it, it's 100 percent true it's great to have you with us enjoy your day sightseeing in london and thank you for taking the time new wrexham supporter there uh harrison This is BBC News, the headlines. Western countries evacuate diplomats from Sudan as the fighting continues. Some citizens, though, remain stranded. Ten years on from the Rana Plaza factory disaster, how much has worker safety improved? And the former Strictly Come Dancing head judge Len Goodman has died at the age of 78. There appears to be no end in sight for fighting between the army and a paramilitary group in Sudan. The violence has been taking place for more than a week now. It's worsening the country's already desperate humanitarian crisis. Though an Eid truce failed to hold, there has been a lull in clashes during which a number of countries have been evacuating their nationals. France just announcing it's closing its embassy in Sudan until further notice. The EU foreign policy chief says there can be no military solution to the fighting and the international community must push the rival generals towards a political resolution. Yasmin Abdul-Majid is a Sudanese-born writer and broadcaster based here in London with family still in the country. Aja, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. I was born in Uganda, and most of the early part of my life was spent in Uganda. After the recent lockdown due to the COVID pandemic, there were these horrific tales that came out of this country about an increase in teenage pregnancy. But there seemed to be even more tales that were coming from Northern Uganda, particularly about abuse of young girls and I was interested in finding out what exactly was happening here in the underbelly of this society. That is why I came to Acholi in Northern Uganda. You're live with BBC News. Scientists in Madagascar are working to establish the impact climate change is having on disease. Since 2014, the island has experienced several outbreaks of bubonic and pneumonic plague. Plague is endemic in Madagascar, with at least 75% of all cases recorded globally coming from the island nation. BBC's Dorcas Wangera reports from Antananarivo. There are so many tributes pouring into Len Goodman, who has died. You can find them on the BBC News website.
Live from London, this is BBC News. Western countries evacuate diplomats from Sudan as the fighting continues, but some citizens remain stranded. Thousands of migrants march through southern Mexico. They're demanding their requests for asylum in the US be sped up. Spain exhumes the remains of a far-right leader as part of a plan to combat nostalgia for the Franco regime. And the former Strictly Come Dancing head judge Len Goodman has died at the age of 78. Evacuations from the Sudanese capital are continuing as fighting between the army and a paramilitary group shows no signs of ending. The violence has been happening for more than a week now, worsening the country's already desperate humanitarian crisis. We have some pictures of a Spanish diplomatic personnel and citizens being evacuated overnight. A number of other countries as well have also moved their diplomatic staff to safety. But foreign civilians have been reporting difficulties trying to leave the country. Some have been travelling by road and convoys heading to Port Sudan on the Red Sea, as well as north to the border with Egypt. Here's our correspondent in Lagos, Maini Jones. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. You're live with BBC News. With less than two weeks to go until the coronation of King Charles, a new poll suggests public opinion about the British royals is changing, with less than a third of 18 to 24-year-olds in the UK wanting the monarchy to continue. Commissioned by the BBC's Panorama programme, the YouGov poll also revealed that almost half of those asked who were from ethnic minority backgrounds believe the royal family has a problem with race and diversity. Jane Corbyn reports. And uh, it was one of the coolest experiences in a sports environment that I've ever had. Harrison Fields there. Stay with us on BBC News. On BBC News, your daily briefing on business and economics from the world's financial centres. From New Broadcasting House in London, World Business Report. Credit crunch. The failed bank Credit Suisse reveals nearly $69 billion were hastily withdrawn in the last months before its rescue. And harnessing the power of North Sea wind to boost renewable energy, an intergovernmental conference in Northern Europe seeks new ways to become energy independent. Hello and welcome to World Business Report. I'm Tyg Enright. Well, let's start with Credit Suisse because the collapsed banking giant has revealed results for the first quarter of this year. It was the bank's last quarter before it had to be rescued by its Swiss rival, UBS. And they illustrate the scale of the crisis, which was around the corner. Between January and March, Credit Suisse made a pre-tax loss of nearly one and a half billion dollars. And to add to its woes, a massive amount of deposits were withdrawn in the three-month period. Total outflow was nearly 69 billion dollars. And just to remind you of what happened next when there were fresh doubts about the stability of the banking industry a few weeks ago investors became increasingly fearful for the future of Credit Suisse and it was eventually bought by its Swiss rival UBS in what was described as an emergency rescue the three billion dollar price tag was a mere fraction of what the bank would have previously been valued. Well, let's get more now from Russ Mould, who's uh, an investment director at AJ Bell and joins us now. Uh, and Russ, worryingly for Credit Suisse, we're told that deposits are still being withdrawn in, in significant quantities. How significant are we talking about? Hello, Tig. Yeah, they did say that they feel that the outflows are stabilising, but not stopping you're quite correct so after that 69 billion dollar outflow in the first quarter money is still seeping out to look at the numbers in swiss francs the company's deposits peaked at just under 400 billion swiss francs two years ago 
They're 166 billion now. So clearly it wasn't just investors who were losing faith in the bank. It was its customers. And that was the most important reason why it eventually fell into the arms of its bitter rival UBS. And for the time being, uh, although UBS has bought Credit Suisse, they're still functionally separate. Is there still a lack of confidence uh, among, among customers uh, in, in, in the bank, do you think? At AJ Bell, thank you very much for joining us today. Now, a major North Sea energy summit is about to get underway shortly, bringing nine European governments uh, and a range of infrastructure companies together. They're thrashing out how to scale up wind generation and other renewable energies in the North Sea, spurred by the fallout, of course, from the uh, Ukraine war and, of course, the bigger push towards renewable energy. One of the big challenges is scaling up the provision of green hydrogen and uh, Europe's major gas operators uh, are together calling on governments to work together to maximise renewable energy, the, the renewable energy potential of the North Sea, including paving the way towards piping hydrogen through the existing natural gas network. Well, one of those uh, gas transmission operators is the UK's National Grid, which oversees the transmission of gra gas across Britain. Its chief executive officer is uh, John Butterworth, and he joins me now live. Thanks very much for being with us today, Mr. Butterworth. Um, so you have an aspiration to use your existing pipes to carry uh, hydrogen uh, as well. Just explain for us, how would that work and what kind of benefits would that bring? Okay, fascinating stuff. John Butterworth uh, from National Gas, thank you very much for joining us today. Now, it's 10 years now since the safety of Bangladesh's garments industry was put into the spotlight after more than 1,100 people died and thousands more were injured when the Rana Plaza factory complex collapsed. The disaster in the capital Dhaka was the worst accident in Bangladesh's history and it exposed poor safety standards and regulation and raised questions over the responsibilities of big retail brands given their push to keep prices as low as possible in the era of fast fashion. Now, the American retailer Bed Bath & Beyond has filed for bankruptcy after failing to secure new funding. The homeware chain warned in January that it was having trouble finding cash to cover expenses. Bed Bath & Beyond became popular in the 1990s as a go-to shopping destination for newlyweds and expecting couples, but its appeal has clearly now faded. Let's get more now with our North American business correspondent, Michelle Fleury, uh, who's been following the story for us in New York. Uh, Michelle, where did it all go wrong for Bed Bath & Beyond? So, uh, it's not all lost, but for Bed Bath & Beyond, sure. difficult times. Michelle Fleury, there we'll have to leave it. Thank you for joining us. And that is World Business Report for now. Until next time, bye-bye. Now it's time for a look at all the day's sports. Let's join Gavin. Hi, Gavin. Yes, hi there, Lucy. Uh, Xi Jiuhui is through to the quarterfinals of the World Snooker Championship in Sheffield. The 20-year-old from China is the lowest-ranked player left in the tournament at nice. 80th in the world. There we go. That's just about all the sport from us for now, Lucy. We'll be back with more later on. We'll see you then. Gavin, see you then. Thank you so much. Len Goodman, ballroom dancer and TV judge who made dancing accessible to millions, has died at the age of 78. He was a dancer and teacher until in his 60s, Strictly and Dancing with the Stars made him famous. I've been speaking to co-host Claudia Winkleman, who paid tribute to her former colleague. Claudia Winkleman there. So many other tributes on our website as well. We've got a live page up and running and there's even been some reaction from Buckingham Palace. The Queen Consort uh, was saddened to learn of the death of Len Goodman, uh, but there are other tributes there as you can see as well. So if you were a fan anywhere in the world, do log on and take a look. Do stay with us here on BBC News. Matthew is here next. Bye. Hello, welcome to latest world weather update with me, Matt Taylor. We'll head to North America first of all, US and Canada. 